Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum to everyone here. It's uh, an honor and glad to be here with my brothers and sisters uh, to share this beautiful convention with everyone. And uh, I'm going to share my story in short on how I converted to Islam and how I discovered Islam within myself. Right? So one of the challenges we face today as Muslims and not Muslims alike in the world, especially in my country, is how to live a life that carries on a spiritual journey or how to be a spiritual person in a country where there is practically no religion at all, right? There is no one who practices religion. And the difficulty of how being a Muslim uh, in every aspect of your life, right? In brief, I will give five points that will make in summary of what was my journey to Islam, yes? And I will begin with the first point, which was, which it was the depth of a life that, has, that had no meaning, and the beginning of a journey into a spiritual life which led to Islam in the end. And I share that Everything that happens in life has a meaning and a purpose, yes? Meaning that when I right now meditate on my life and I look backwards into the problems and the situation I was facing at that time, uh, it's impossible for it to be a coincidence. It's impossible. And I begin with the story in high school. I'm going to make it very brief because it's a very long story. And it all began when I actually began to meditate and think about the future of my life, be it because I was in a country where actually the future is not being sought of, right? There is no spiritual guidance, there is no counseling, there is nothing. And I ask for guidance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? For, for us, it's God, or in the Jewish tradition, is Hashem Elohim. And uh, from there, many doors began to open to me. I began to go, I began to, to, go to university because the opportunity got opened, even though many, for me, many opportunities were closed, right? Because of my situation, the economic status that I had at that moment. And then when I, for the second point, when I entered the university, I began to, to become very interested in religion because there was a, a, a moment where a woman who was practicing yoga and was a Buddhist uh, introduced us to what it was spirituality, uh, the practice of yoga and everything else that had to do with that field. And uh, the impact that it had on me to be a kind person, a truthful person, just and to practice peace, which is something that Buddhism has, was very interesting to me, right? And from there on, I was 20 years old when that happened. I am now 26. And from there, I had a journey of six years before Islam, right? So the third point, which was the ignition of change within and outwardly through religion. Yes, and many religions itself. I began to study many religions at the same time. Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism. There is also the mix of philosophy, poetry, and everything that had what we say the liberal arts, right? Even though I was studying engineering. <laughs> so that actually paved the way because I was looking for something that was resonating within myself and with what I was seeking, meaning I was trying to be in tune with what I was feeling and also with what was the truth outside of me, which mean, meant the religion that I was going to choose, which was a major preoccupation for myself. So I came back again to my original religion, which was Judaism, it's the religion I was raised on. So. After that, it all became a very serious and spiritual life. I was able to develop willpower 
a strong mind, and I was able to, to ignore many of the things of the world that entertain the mind and keep you away from dedicating yourself to a successful life in both aspects, in this life and in the hereafter, which Islam also has that point of view in, inside the religion. So in the fourth uh, point, I'm going to, to, to summarize what actually made me know Islam. So one day, because I had this habit of taking, actually waking up very early and studying until like 6 p.m., doing everything of the day, and then after 6 p.m., I used to go to, to my computer and gather books or have a schedule of my religious studies. So it was more of a personal journey into this. So I have this habit still of looking at Hubble telescopes images. Yeah, right? So I began to, to, to search online, and one day, I was seeking quotes from Rumi. He's a poet from the Persian, uh, Persian language, very beautiful poet. So looking at that, I saw an image that had one of the rose petal petals nebulae behind. And in the front, it had the first introduction to the verses, which is Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. And downward, it had the, the translation in English. And when I actually read it in English, in the name of Allah. When I pronounced Allah, I went blank. You know, I completely, like my heart emptied out. Everything began to become very, I resonated with it. Everything began to be calm and like desires went away and my ambitions and everything else was flushed away when I pronounced Allah. And it was a very, very beautiful experience for me. And I said to myself, I know Allah. Who is Allah? Wait, I know him. So I look at Google, which is something that many youth don't take uh, the responsibility and the chance to do, which is take the technology power that they have today and search for the truth, avoiding many of the things that are out there, very dangerous things to the heart. And from there on, I began to study Islam. I began to study, actually, I began to, to acquire a universal view of everything at the same time, every religion. I began to see the pieces of the puzzle coming together uh, through all the, the, the knowledge and the aspect of religions that I acquired during the years. I saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every religion. That was truth, right? In Christianity, Judaism, even in Buddhism, there is an aspect of, of it, but in personal God uh, view of it. And it's, he is everywhere, in every religion. Every, but Allah, he knows what he has done, but the three main religions, Islam, Judaism, and Christianity, which resonated with me, right? Because of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from there on, uh, there was a journey, right, to Islam until today. So I'm going to give three advices, three advice, pieces of advice to everyone who is seeking a guidance or a spiritual path, right, who is in the path, be he a Muslim or a non-Muslim. And it is study and seek knowledge, seek philosophy, engross yourself, cover yourself with knowledge, and don't stop. Don't think that you are in the right path. Meditate on it every day. And be humble, because the one that enters the sea of knowledge will drown by only, even if it's a drop of that knowledge, by that only alone, he will drown if, if he is arrogant. And be careful with the salt that you sprinkle in the bread that you eat, that goes and that is eaten in the house of hearts. Meaning, be careful of what you consume through your senses. Uh, they can guide you, they can enrich you, or they can corrupt you. And I will give, I will give a little line that for everyone that I think is true in, within every human being, and is that man is love, in truth, his interior. 
if you see if you follow that advice in my opinion you will be okay and always ask for guidance and believing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forget fear uh, pronounce his name alone and inshallah ta'ala non-muslims and muslims inshallah one day will acquire, acquire victory in the world amen